Hello and welcome back to the Flying Bible again. I'm Travis and today we are starting from that baptism spot by the Jordan River and taking off directly from here. Today we are taking off in a different plane. We were in the Cessna 152 Aerobat last time. Today we are in a JMB Aircraft VL3. This as an aircraft I like for a number of reasons. First of all, on the outside of it, it, it kind of reminds me of uh, the Air Coop, which is an awesome plane and one that runs in our family. Uh, but on the inside, although the shape reminds me of that, uh, it has different uh, mechanics in it. Uh, it's a very interesting airplane to fly and it's very aerodynamic, very powerful, has an easy takeoff which is very helpful when you're taking off from a place like the baptism spot by the Jordan River. So Jesus went directly from the Jordan River, his baptism, out into the desert. So that's what we're doing right now, heading directly out from Jesus' baptism with him and journeying into the desert, the wilderness of Judea. And out here in the desert, Jesus was baptized for 40 days. Not exactly sure what route Jesus would have taken. That's anybody's guess. Uh, so we are just going to start heading down in this direction. The desert uh, kind of begins around Jericho. Not exactly begins, but it, it's a gradual becoming a desert as you go south into Jericho. And then further south Jericho is just straight desert for a long, long time. And so here, this is the wilderness of Judea on the west side of the Dead Sea. And if you go up this steep descent, where Jesus would have gone up is anybody's guess. But as you go up here, then you get over the top of it and you really enter into that desert area. Right around this region is the region of Qumran. You may have heard the Dead Sea Scrolls. Well, this is um, uh, the area where those were found, where the Essenes were hanging out. And they had those scriptures that they left behind in the jars that ended up being found. Well, now we enter into this desert. It's a very empty place, very lifeless place. Jesus fasted for 40 days, ate no food for 40 days, not even sure where he was getting any water from. He had to have some water to even survive that time as we need our water to drink on earth. There's not a lot of places to get water out there in the wilderness of, of Judea, um, but he had to find those few places where there were. As you see, there's not a lot of living out here and that's for good reason. So we're just going to wander around this desert with Jesus as he's being tempted by the devil. He was tempted because he was starving. The devil said, turn this rock into a loaf of bread, feed yourself. The devil tempted him by taking him up a high mountain. And as you see, this isn't a place where there is very high mountains. Uh, there are large hills. And it's kind of a mountainous region in some areas of Israel, but it kind of flattens out as you get really into the desert. It's just that, that, that ascent that continues on up into uh, the rest of Israel, where Jerusalem is up there. You keep climbing that hill and get over it, and then you'll start getting into the area of Jerusalem. So what mountain the devil took Jesus on to is anybody's guess, but he was able to show him all the kingdoms of the world. And, and of the known world that still involved a very wide area, a lot of places that you could not see from here, even on the tallest hill in the area. The devil also took him into Jerusalem, onto the pinnacle of the temple to test God and just, just throw himself off of there and prove that the angels would save him. And who knows what other kind of temptations Jesus had run into in dealing with the devil out here. Well, in that short trip that we just took through the desert, now we're heading north, but that, that trip really took about 30 minutes to fly around in real life, and then it's another 30 minutes up to Galilee. As you can tell, we've shortened these videos by a great deal.
after those 40 days, Jesus heads on up to Galilee. What route Jesus took to Galilee is anybody's guess. As you can see, the Jordan Valley on the right. And then the hills on the left, we're just kind of flying high over it. So you can uh, make your own choice of what route you think Jesus might have taken back up. Well now as you've heard the engine sound like it cut off, as you see the propellers are still spinning, but we've had what seems like an engine failure. So we're gliding, thankfully this aircraft glides very well and gives us lots of time to decide on a good place to land and I think we found a good place to land and check out what's wrong. As you see, there is a nice green little field up there that we are going to make a landing on. Hang on, because we're lacking our power. This might be a little bit of a rough landing, uh, but we're going to stop here and check it out and see if we can't get things rolling again. Where we're stopping here is in the Jezreel Valley. We just entered into the Jezreel Valley, which is a very interesting place. There's a lot of history of Israel that happened in this place. And this is where we're going to find a good place to land. Now we figured out what was going on. That was actually not a mechanical error at all. That was a pilot's error because I didn't switch the, the fuel from the left wing to the right wing when my fuel was running low. I didn't happen to notice that that fuel light was on. Well, we still got fuel in the right wing and this is a simulator so we have some imaginary fuel on hand and I just went ahead and reloaded our fuel up so we don't have that problem again and again an easy takeoff with this aircraft and this Jezreel Valley uh, this is a place where you'll find Mount Gilboa to the south and that is a place familiar because King Saul and the Israelites fought the Philistines there and lost to the Philistines there down at the southern end of the Jezreel Valley and, and also in this Jezreel Valley here there was this uh, experience with Jezebel and, and Elisha sent one of the prophets to go talk to one of the commanders Jehu uh, to take care of Jezebel and, and make a big change out there. Right ahead of us, what we are coming upon is the Mount of Tabor. Mount Tabor is the place that's traditionally understood to be the Mount of Transfiguration. So this is what we understand to be the place where Jesus was transfigured. So we're going to go ahead and make a quick stop on here and land on this Mount of Transfiguration so we can uh, catch a quick glimpse of what it would have been like for Jesus and a couple of his disciples up here as he transfigured in his form and they had this great vision of him standing with Elijah and Moses up here. Now, if you find real pictures of this place, there's actually a whole lot more trees and the, the big buildings that are represented by the little buildings up here 
are actually a monastery and its associated buildings, so there's not quite as much room to land in real life as there is here on the simulator, but it kind of gives you an idea and you can get this great view, and even though it's not a mountain like Mount Everest or something, this is very high, thousands of feet up above the surrounding landscape. And it's a place that makes a whole lot of sense for Jesus to have chosen as a place to transfigure a mountain, just like something calling to mind Mount Sinai or Mount Hor of the famous mountains of the Bible because it's a, it's a mount that stands high above the landscape and is great for a symbolic act to help the disciples understand who Jesus is. So we've taken off from Mount Tabor and we're heading on into Galilee. Mount Tabor is just a little bit west, southwest of the Sea of Galilee. So we are in the Lower Galilee at the moment. We are approaching the Upper Galilee. So basically Lower Galilee is the side of the Sea of Galilee where the, the Jordan River comes out to the south and heads down towards the Dead Sea where we just came from. And Northern Galilee is the northern end of the Sea of Galilee where the Jordan River continues going north. And the, the land of Israel continues for a little while north especially in traditional times, the tribe of Dan was uh, up north of the Sea of Galilee. Now as we are crossing the Sea of Galilee, you can see on the left in the lower left hand side, that is Tiberias, and above that is Magdala, where uh, Mary Magdalene was from, and above that is Capernaum. Capernaum seems to be the first place that Jesus went after he returned from his time in the desert. And immediately when he was up here, he ran across some disciples along the seashore, called his first disciples, and his ministry was off and going. So we're going to come back next time and spend quite a bit more time around the Sea of Galilee to check out what Jesus was doing, where he was going, and crossing the sea, going from place to place throughout his ministry. So now in Upper Galilee, we've found a nice little airport to land at. We're going to stop, and this is going to be the conclusion for today's episode of The Flying Bible. Please join us again next week as we visit the Sea of Galilee and experience some of Jesus' ministry with him. Thank you all so much again for being here. God bless you. See you next time.